Konnichiwa, I'm Jordan Glenn from Ryzen Zephyr, Fukuoka, and today I'm going to give you some tips on how to improve your shooting. Let's get it. Uh, usually what I like to do before practicing games is uh, form shooting. Uh, it's a drill that I normally do all the time just to warm myself up and just to get a, a familiar with the basket. So normally what I like to do is the three spots, the middle, both on the side. So just for example, um, I like to line myself up with the middle of the goal, my feet squared with my shoulders, and I put the ball in my hand. And depending on your placement, but preferably, you wanna have like a little gap in between fingerprints. I like to put my fingerprints on the laces because I shoot on the laces. And what I normally do, I just line myself up, shoot, have a good L formation, and my goal is to exaggerate on the arc. So I want to shoot higher, higher than normally. So when I shoot regularly, uh, I have the, the natural form just to shoot higher to get more arc. So when I do my form shooting, I want to shoot higher just so I can get a, a swish. And my goal is to make 10 and to get all net. So for example, like this, that'll be one. Do it again, line myself up, ball placement, click the wrist, and try to get a all net is my goal. So that's two, that'll be three. And then once I hit 10, then I'll go to the side, put my angle, do the same thing. That'll be one. And you want to try to just exaggerate the arc, so you want to try to shoot higher than normal. That. That. Then you also can shoot from the side if you want to. Same thing, line yourself up, feet square, high arc, all neck. What you want to try to shoot for? you release the ball, you want to try to leave your formation up, flick your wrist until the ball goes through the net. Sometimes you can jump if you want to, or what I normally do, I just rise on my tippy toes, so I really don't like, really do the full jumping motion. I just stand on my toes, so I'll do like that. So um, you can I, normally what I do is I just just like float the ball in the air like this, and then just work on like if somebody was passing me the ball. So instead of just lining myself up like this, I would do like this. And shoot, or I do like this and shoot to simulate somebody passing me the ball. So. And I'll do like different areas so all passes are not going to be the same. So I'll do like this, shoot, or catch the ball up high, and shoot. Sometimes I'll do a low, and shoot. So that's just another, another variation you can do. And then also, once you master just the regular, the regular way, take away your guide hand. So you do the same way, line up, have you shoot the ball. I like to put my fingers on the laces, and then you can just do the exact same thing, but without your guide hand. So you just do this, and one hand. Still want to exaggerate on the high arc. Just like that, you can make 10 from each spot, or five, however you want them to do it. So I wouldn't count it because I want to try to get an all net. So that'll be perfect. 
perfect. And if you want to, you can you can leave your hand, but don't put your hand on the ball. So for example, it'd be like this. Because it will simulate just you using your guide hand on when you shoot the ball. And so if you take away your guide hand, you will just focus more on strengthening your formation with your, your, your shooting hand. So once you put your guide hand on there, it will be, it'll feel way more easier and way more fluent. You'll feel way more comfortable because you're used to uh, doing it with one hand. So it'll be it'll be more comfortable for you. Then once you add your guide in, it'll be way more smooth and way more fluent. You can just do that. Like I said, and then if you want to, there's something else that I did when I was improving my shooting is once I got real comfortable with the, the area that I was in, I was I would take a step back and then just do the same thing. Just, <clears throat> You can make five, you can make ten, but take a step back. So if you start right here, just take one step back. Or a baby step, however you want to do it, it's up to you. But you can just do the same thing. So you can start it right there, and step back. You can just go from all over the court. You can just take another step back. And then the weight, the more you keep uh, distancing yourself from the rim, then you can start to jump. So if I'm just right here, then you start to jump. And like I said, you can do the exact same thing. Get the ball, toss it to yourself. And you can do the same way with this one too. And that's another another drill that I used to do is uh I don't have a chair, but take the chair and you will sit down in the chair. Once you stand up, you will want to shoot. So it's to simulate yourself going into the shooting motion. So you will sit down in the chair and once you rise up, you will shoot. And so that's just different drills that I was doing when I was trying to improve my shooting. Uh, it helped me tremendously. Uh, just getting comfortable with the rim, getting comfortable with shooting. And you know, it's, it's helped out. So, I mean, till to this day, I continue to do those those three drills before practice and before games. So it's like my my ritual, you know, I like to do. So uh, I'm glad you guys was here to witness this. I'm glad this advice will help you out. Uh, take these tips, take these advice, and just to remember that, you know, you're not gonna improve your shooting, you know, in one day. You know, it's gonna take time, it's gonna take Know, consistent work so just stay with it keep preparing yourself stay confident and one day you'll become a good shooter too so i hope to see you there thanks a lot third i'm gone I'm